For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today to discuss the recent crime stats in the Western Cape Province is Western Cape Provincial Minister of Community Safety and Police Oversight, Regan Allen. So, MEC, your province's recently uh, quarterly crime statistics revealed that 39 children died in the Western Cape since January. Uh, it came as a shock to us, and I'm sure you are working hard to fight crime. What do you attribute as the cause for these shocking statistics? Thank you so much for bringing us into this particular conversation. We have released the information that 39 young children between the ages of 1 and 18 have been murdered in our province. When we compared that particular figure to the same period last year, we actually saw a reduction in murders. But we still felt it is very necessary to communicate on it because it is totally unacceptable. It is heartbreaking whenever a child is murdered. I am vividly remembering two weeks ago when a young child at the age of nine was playing inside a residential property and a known gangster was busy cleaning a gun, a illegal firearm. The firearm went off. It hit the child. Um, the child then succumbed um, to his injuries five days later. Um, and I'm happy to announce that the suspect in that particular case has been apprehended. He is going to face um, the full might of the law because we would never want these gangsters to torment our communities. So the main attribution uh, to child murders has been identified as gang-related uh, murders. It's often when there is a stray bullet that will hit a young child because gangsters are fighting over drug turf wars and are fighting gang battles, uh, which often leads to our young people um, losing their life. But even though it's a reduction from last year, 39 children is still too many. Um, even if it was one, it will still be too many. And we are wanting to make sure that between our LEAP officers, between the South African Police Service and all our stakeholders, neighborhood watchers and CPFs, that we galvanize communities because we need community involvement um, to eradicate um, the scourge from our communities. And I'm sure that uh, these statistics have, have created a lot of fear uh, to the families, especially in the areas with gangs and high levels of crime. What would you say to the affected families and those who don't feel safe anymore? We, we are very determined to do everything in our power to ensure that we hold the SEPs accountable, but also that we fight for our young people. Uh, I've not... I've not lost hope. I've seen the reduction and I know many communities have also not lost hope because we are wanting to ensure that more of our communities get actively involved. I want to state for the record that when we look at the crime stats for that particular quarter in its entirety, the Western Cape had the highest decrease in murders across our entire country. We had a 14.1% reduction in murders in the entire country, but that will never make us happy. We actually want to see no murders in our province due to gang violence, due to um, flare-ups um, in drug turfos. But I, once again, we want to send my sincere condolences um, to those families. And I sadly remember in the year 2011, when I received a, um, a call that my own nephew was 19 at the time and he was gunned down in Bontierville. And it's devastating. I was at the time a few years older than what he is, um, and, but he also had his whole life ahead of him. And he was gunned down in, in Bontierville. It actually made the front page of a certain news publication, and it's heartbreaking. So I can't even fully imagine if it's your own child, um, because for that, for me, when it was my own nephew, um, it was already so, so heartbreaking. And we keep those families in our prayers as well. Mm. I know you are beefing up neighborhood watch personnel um, in problem areas to support the South African Police Service and the city's law enforcement uh, advancement plan in Delft. Have you noticed a difference and are you receiving support from the communities that uh, you are trying to assist? 
Thank you for this particular question. It is a vital question because I've often said that law enforcement and the South African Police Service can't do it alone. We rely on community activism and we rely on stakeholders within the safety space to work with government. In Delft specifically, when I was in the area on Monday, we also had engagements with the CPF, but also with social development, knowing that social development plays such a key role in the fight against gender-based violence, which is also an evil in our society, but also the launch of gender-based, um, anti-gender-based violence ambassadors. So besides us working with our communities, with our safety stakeholders, we are working across our government as well. In some places, we needing to, to ramp up that particular partnership, that cooperation. And in other areas, I'm very happy to announce that we are getting great feedback from communities and the 17 and all thousand Neighborhood Watch members that we have across our province um, should be commended um, for all of their hard work and dedication. I have one particular story that I think vividly paints the picture in that there was a bus stop in a certain community where people were robbed early in the morning and they were often robbed before they go to work. We then engaged our neighborhood watch and we have our volunteers in the CPF and they would patrol that particular corner at the bus stop. It's also a dark area early in the morning. I spoke to a lady there and she told me since the neighborhood watch is in this particular vicinity, we are no longer being robbed in the morning. We are being protected because they act as the eyes and ears and they are quickly um, in touch with the law enforcement or with South African Police Service um, should there be any crime elements in that particular vicinity. So we've already seen the amount of house breakings that reduces the amount of vehicle um, that are being broken into is being reduced because this extra boots on the ground, the extra visibility. But we need more and more communities to actively sign up, um, join your neighborhood watch, be actively involved uh, because crime crime affects all of us. And have you thought of incorporating uh, maybe social development services or social workers uh, to help identify community projects or sports development projects that could maybe remove teenagers from the streets and from the clutches of mm -hmm. these gangs? Most definitely, that is how we work in terms of the Western Cape Safety Plan. It is a whole of government, whole of society approach. Your question actually raises... Another story that I think is very important in that two weeks ago, our under 15 Western province soccer team won the South African under 15 national championship. So a team from the Western Cape won the national competition under 15. And we firmly believe that playing sport, being part of your cultural activities can keep you away from the abuses of drugs and of gangsterism. But also, in the same week, we heard a report of a 15-year-old boy who took a gun and he shot a 14-year-old girl. And it's two stories. The one on the one hand is where there's young soccer boys that are doing our province proud and that is representing our province and they could go on to do amazing things in their life. On the other hand, there's a young boy that got involved with gangsterism that had access to an illegal firearm and that shot a 14-year-old girl. And that is not what we want in our province. We are wanting to ensure that social development work with our community stakeholders in terms of the demand for drugs. We work with our Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport to ensure that there is mass participation, mass participation across sporting codes so that we can identify the talent that can represent our province and eventually represent our country. So it's definitely the whole of government approach. And we have seen steady progress in that regard. But we obviously know that we need to do so much more as a country um, in order to address all of the scourges that we have. Mm, so the issue of, of firearms is once again a, a big issue, not only for your province, but for the whole country. But we, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen uh, in the reports that your province now uh, is trying by all means to make sure that these firearms are 
are no longer in the wrong hands. Tell us about the incentive that you've recently introduced uh, so mm. that people can report these firearms. Thank you so much. The one thing I'm fully aware of is that whenever there is a firearm in a community and that firearm is being used to perpetuate crime, someone in that community would know about it. I'm going to repeat that particular sentence. I grew up in Mitchell's Plain, so I have a fair idea. Whenever there's boys or men running around with guns, someone in the community would see them. Someone in the community would be aware of who these perpetrators are. And for that reason, we have relaunched our reward system. If any person in the Western Cape is aware of any illegal firearm that is in the community, they can contact 21 in order to provide that information either anonymously or they can provide the information. It will all be handled in a confidential manner so that they are able to then obtain a reward of up to 5,000 rand. We would want to see the firearms that is in our communities, that is tormenting our communities, is not in the hands of gangsters. It's not in the hands of young ch uh, children that is being used by gangsters to perpetuate crime. So I'm very happy that we have relaunched um, our reward system and we have received a number of tip-offs already, and we are monitoring that um, um, every week to ensure that more and more people can actually um, report their illegal firearms. During the month of June, when I checked um, the data, we actually confiscated 18 illegal firearms already. So we are wanting to make sure that these firearms are reduced and it's actually taken off our, our streets. And that number is, just for clarity, it's 0 to one Four double six double zero double one. Any person in the Western Cape can report if they are aware of any illegal firearm that is in a community. And my last question to you, uh, Mr. Reagan, will be: You continue to advocate for the devolution of policing powers uh, to capable provincial governments, such as your province, and you believe that the current policing method is no longer working. Have you received any promising feedback from our government on this matter? I'm glad how you have phrased that particular question, because there's a saying that says, "If you do the same thing over and over." and you're expecting different results, uh, it actually doesn't bode well. So from 1994, we have had the same system where policing is at a national level. We all know policing across our country has sadly failed. We have been calling for devolution, for more powers, and that particular call is now resonating with other provinces. You may be aware that the premier of Gauteng has been advocating for a new policing model. It's the same thing that we are asking for, for devolution. Devolution appears to be a strong word that national government doesn't like. So I would be happy to even call it a new policing model. And that essentially means that provinces must have greater powers and control, and you must bring policing closer to the people. Where I'm sitting currently in Cape Town, choices are being made in Pretoria that affects us. Choices are being made in Pretoria that affects KZN or that affects other provinces as well. We are saying, give us the responsibility because we are closer to the people on the ground. We will be able to ensure that we work with the South African Police Service and be held accountable. The same system that has been currently being used when we have a national commissioner who is on record to say in Parliament that the South African Police Service is unable to fulfill its mandate. That's a blatant um, confession that the South African Police Service uh, have failed us. We are saying in the Western Cape, give us the power, and with that power comes responsibility, and we would want to make sure that we safeguard the residents of the Western Cape. And more and more provinces are now making similar sentiments, um, but many are calling it a new policing model because we cannot do the same thing to expect safer communities by doing the same thing over and over. We need to make sure that we are actually smarter in our approach. 
That was Western Cape Provincial Minister of Community Safety and Police Oversight, Rick and Allen, in conversation with Polity discussing the recent crime statistics.